The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. Uh, last day filling in for the man, Tommy O'Brien. He will be back Monday, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to that. I want to say good morning to the den. We got Shaw's the man, Jimmy, D Fifth Element, Fish and Riverview. How you guys doing? Let's see what we have going on today before the market opens. We are moving a little bit sideways right now, a little bit down. Um, the close yesterday was pretty good. Uh, we were green in all the major indices on some okay volume. Give me one second to fix this. You know, the hair becomes a liability sometimes with these uh, headphones. <laughs> I'm keeping it for the winter. Ne next Florida summer, I can't do this with the hair. Uh, Anyways, uh, SPX futures were sideways, Russell futures sideways as well. Same with the NQs and the YMs. We are up um, a minor amount in gold. The gold contract's at 1931 right now. Silver contract, 2327. Copper contract, 381. Uh, this is doing pretty all right, especially with China easing some of its um, rest restrictions regarding um, cash that needs to be held. Let's see, we have the light Swede crude futures at 89.98. So we are flirting really heavily um, with that $90 area. In fact, we went up to 91.15 at its highest. Um, this will continue to bring um, some pressure on the United States and the Federal Reserve in particular because this will uh, increase inflation. As I've been saying this past week, we are probably out of the woods at least in September. We're not due for another rate hike. Uh, but depending on how long this persists and other kind of factors, um, you know, we might see some more rate hikes before the end of the year. And then the Brent crude uh, is at 93.46. 30 year Treasury up 118. Uh, at 118 right now, uh, we have the 10 year at 109. And then we have the five year at 106. And we're staying pretty stable there. Tesla up minorly 0.79% before the open. Steel Dynamics coming back off that $100 uh, area on some okay volume. Um, see, this $97 point would have, been, would have been the buy entry, but I was not paying attention, which is a uh, shame, uh, because this will probably float back up to this 104 area if it can get some more volume, and we might see a, maybe a structuring of that kind of channel that it has been trading in. Uh, the DXY, well over that magic number. We're trading at 105.31, so quite a break to the top side. And we'll see, we might be flirting with 105.50 sometime next week. Uh, that does bring selling pressure into the market. Um, after the, uh, the price in, essentially, of no uh, further interest rates for this month, once that's kind of set in, we again might see some depressive effect on the indices as the dollar tends to do that when it goes up. Uh, and then, obviously, we'll see some press down on gold. The gold contract right now at 1941, actually, even with a stronger dollar. QQQ at 376. Google, we'll talk a little bit uh, about later. They had a settlement with the state of California for about $93 million, um, just for some just overall shady practices. But honestly, you could probably incorporate that into some section of the balance sheet for these large tech companies because they tend to do those kind of things. Uh, Meta 31038 uh, at 0.43% down. Mark Zuckerberg is officially the uh, 10th richest person on the planet today with 108 billion net worth. Disney at 8485. Um, we'll talk about them a little bit in some proposal that someone gave to buy um, some of their streaming. And then Apple at 17704. They um, are actually going to go ahead and update iPhone 12s after it was discovered by a French. Uh, government-related watchdog group that it emitted too much radiation. So we'll look into that. Uh, big news for the day is Ford. We were talking about them a little bit. They had some 
uh, lagging EV sales, not competitive yet with that. Uh, they're bringing back some of the descendants of the original Ford. I might put them back on the board. Uh, this was posited with uh, Bud Light as well. Uh, of course, the family sold that to, um, uh, they sold it out of the family and they want to buy it back uh, because of, again, lagging sales with Bud Light. We'll talk about them a little bit too because they were losing shelf space, which, uh, give me one second pull up something. They're losing shelf space, which in uh, the kind of grocery market you cannot do. In any kind of uh, brick and mortar retailer, you have to dominate shelf space. And this is, there's a bunch of formulas surrounding that. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So anyways, there is a uh, auto worker strike beginning at the Ford plant in Michigan. Same with GM. Uh, hundreds of people including auto workers on the night shift uh, and their supporters gathered at the Ford Assembly Plant in Wayne, Michigan, as members of the United Auto Workers Union walked off the job to begin a historic strike. This is the first ever simultaneous strike against the Detroit Three automakers, including General Motor, Chrysler, uh, Parent Stellantis. Chrysler had some issues as well with their EV batteries that were catching on fire. Um, and of course, Ford as well. And that kicked off early on Friday, today. Um, on Thursday, Chief Executive Jim Farley warned of a grim scenario if Ford acquiesced to the union demands of a 40% hike in pay and end to a tiered wage system that pays new hires less than veterans and a return to defined benefit pensions. He says that these proposals would put them out of business. Um, that's a pretty intense statement. Uh, the UAW president, Sean Fain, has said that Ford could have funded better pay and benefits for workers if it curtailed stock buybacks and dividends to shareholders. Um, Ford reported returning $2.5 billion back to investors in 2022. As the strike began, uh, Fain and Debbie Dingell, a Democratic U.S. representative from Michigan, were among the high-profile visitors. Um, there's about 3,300 UAW members assembled at the uh, Bronco SUVs and Ranger pickup trucks. This is pretty intense, and I think Ford really needs to look into this um, and, and see how much they're really investing uh, in EV. I'm concerned that the main demographic of Ford uh, doesn't necessarily care about electric vehicles. Uh, the infrastructure nationally still isn't there to really support it. I had a buddy who's trying to convince me to buy a Tesla because they have the tax breaks and it ended up, it would have been an okay deal, honestly, um, even if I sold my newer car. Um, but the, the point is, is, you know, I like to travel. I like to go out to rural areas. We have a lot of springs here in Florida, and uh, I like road trips as well. And the infrastructure isn't really there. There's not, like, a set relay, especially, like, when you get into the deep south, uh, which is, you know, i got to pass to get anywhere else in the country if I'm driving. And uh, it just didn't make sense to me, really. And I, I think, you know, Ford has definitely done, and a lot of these pickup truck companies have kind of gone into this, like, luxury uh, vehicle business, right? I've, I've sat in some of these newer pickup trucks, and I mean, they're massive, and I mean, they're pretty nice, right? But I'm not sure that's really what a lot of people are looking for when they're buying these kind of pickup trucks. I think they need beaters. I think these guys are contractors. I think they're laborers, and uh, they care much more about utility than form, and I think Ford is focused a lot on form, and that has driven up the price, and uh, that might be negative for them uh, on the long term. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it doesn't seem like Thinkorswim has uh, arm holdings on here yet. Um, I'll, I'll see what happens. Just when you, you know, when you type in arm, you get Arvin Meritor Incorporated, which is not what we're looking at. Anyways, um, a simple chart on it. We'll talk about this a little more. Obviously, the IPO was yesterday. Uh, this is a chip uh, company that started trading at about 55.71 um, at the close yesterday at 63.59 and pre-market 65. 87. Obviously, a little uh, too soon to make any kind of assessment on it. Um, but as we know, IPOs tend to ramp up uh, pretty significantly uh, once they're first released, and then you see a major sell off, and then really uh, a price kind of stabilization, and then we go from there as quarterlies kind of get released. And obviously, this company will have a lot of um, scrutiny, essentially. Let me try to pull up. So yeah, this is SoftBank's chip designer. That's ARM and extend uh, gains of 65 billion uh, on its NASDAQ debut. Uh, stock closed 25% higher than its offer price, uh, $51 on Thursday. So it gapped up to 55.71 uh, immediately. Uh, it's now up 34.2% from that level at 68.44. Uh, analysts expect more trading volatility for the ARM stock if it draws more interest from AI-focused retail investors. And uh, also due to a limited number of publicly traded shares, uh, SoftBank continues to own about 90% of the stake. It's something to keep in mind as well when you're getting into this. Uh, you're always kind of at the, uh, the behest of whales here a little bit. This happens in crypto as well. Uh, it currently has just a 10% share in the segment that was expected to grow at an annual rate of 17% through 2025, mainly due to advances in AI. Uh, ARM generates very high margin revenue, but much of that is put back into research and development. So we'll stand to see when um, quarterlies come out uh, for that company. Um, some more chip woes. Uh, TSMC is telling vendors uh, to delay chip equipment deliveries. Uh, so Taiwan's TSMC has told its major suppliers to delay the delivery of high-end chip making equipment. Uh, as the world's top contract chip maker grows increasingly nervous about customer demand, uh, this is two sources familiar with the matter. Uh, the instruction by TSMC, which is grappling with delays, is its uh, 40 billion chip factory in Arizona is aimed at controlling costs and reflects the company's growing caution about the outlook for demand. Uh, suppliers currently expect the delay to be short term. Uh, the source is said declining to be named as information is not public. 
Uh, the company referred Reuters uh, to comments by CEO CCUA in July that weaker economic conditions, slow recovery in China, and softer end market demand is making customers more cautious and more mindful of controlling inventory. Companies affected by the instruction to delay include a Dutch firm ASML, obviously. They uh, produce a lot of these wafers, it's a very uh, cutting edge technology, and uh, they are the world leader in this, uh, which makes lithography equipment essential for high end chip making. Uh, in an interview with Reuters last week, ASML CMO Peter Venick said uh, some orders for its high end tools have been pushed back without naming customers, and that he expects it would be a short term management issue. ASML is operating at maximum capacity, and overall sales are forecast to grow at 30% this year. If you guys haven't checked out, how that lithography works. There is a video on YouTube. Uh, I forget the guy's name and I will try to remember to link it, but he's able to tour uh, IBM's chip making factory. Obviously very, uh, it's a guided tour, of course. A lot of this technology is um, kept secret and no one person knows how to do every part of the job. Um, but you get a little insight into how these uh, wafers are made I mean, the different processes they go through, and uh, I think it's pretty fascinating. I'll link that as well. And yesterday, on that note, too, um, getting kind of a side note, we were talking about Tesla trying to figure out how to make die casts for the undercarriage of their car. So instead of having so many little pieces, it would just be one major form. Uh, there's a video uh, that's done by the same host uh, on YouTube that goes over how these uh, dies are used. And, you know, it's just little things you don't think about, right? Again, all these small little metal parts that go everywhere um, and kind of keep everything together uh, and how integral that is to the economy. So I'll try to find both of these videos and I'll link it in the den. If you're not in the den yet, give me a second because I'm going to plug this again. You know, I had, I, we had a longtime viewer uh, who got into the den and they uh, sent me a direct message yesterday and they said they just absolutely love it. And I get that from a lot of people, and I really suggest getting in here. If you have any issues, you can always call me, of course, uh, getting into the den. You can send me an email, too, at jacob at tfnn.com. I will absolutely take time out of my day to get you in here and get you set up so it's an enjoyable experience. Just $1 a year, guys. Just $1 a year. And I'll say, too, you know, there's a lot of different trading rooms on the Internet and stuff like that. And obviously, for Intel purposes, I go and look at them. We're a, you know, we're a private trading room. A lot of these other guys are public, um, so you know we know who's in there. It's uh, secure. This is only one dollar a year, and we easily have, on average, I'd say, in total number, like six times the amount of people in a lot of these other big-time trading rooms. Other private rooms trading, teaching you thirty bucks, and they just want your money. This is one dollar a year. This is just so we can keep everyone safe and know who's in there, and uh, it is, it's really good. You scroll down here. This is a three-step process. Very simple. Anyways, moving forward from that, Oracle, uh, you know, we had a little bit of a downtick as they're kind of lagging a little bit, um, but let's take a look here. They're bringing its database infrastructure to Azure, so you can see really quite a big drop off. Um, this leg down on some lighter volume, uh, this was September 11th, uh, but then you had even a larger amount of volume gapping down as well, and a little bit of recovery. So what's happening with this is, uh, again, they're bringing their database infrastructure to Microsoft Azure. What does this do? This cuts down their expenditure on maintaining uh, infrastructure, which is a massive cost sink into any company. And this is good for, <laughs> this, is, this is mutually beneficial for both companies involved, okay? Because Microsoft Azure, Microsoft makes a ton of money off Azure. This is their cloud hosting program. I mean, if you even know how to, and this is, one of the things that's been so interesting to me, if you even know how to manage an Azure database for a company, even an AWS database, uh, I mean, your, your income just as a manager or security professional for that is absurd, right? And this is because it's so integral to a lot of these companies. You can keep spinning uh, new machines. You don't need to invest in hardware. You know, when you have these massive server rooms uh, that are native or on-premise, there's a lot of uh, complex kind of planning that goes into making sure these things operate efficiently. I mean, you don't think about it, right? But if you stick a bunch of computers together, there could be exchange of electrons that kind of fuzz each other out. Uh, it maybe um, degrades the integrity of some of the data being stored. You have to think about heat and cool airflow. And uh, of course, you need to be able to source this hardware. And so this is a massive cost sink. And so what you do is you defer all of your kind of infrastructure to a company like Microsoft with Microsoft Azure. 
uh, or even AWS. This is also another massive one, and uh, it's very interesting. So, and this article has days uh, after Oracle missed Q1 2023 revenue expectations and gave a downbeat rest of the year outlook, setting its share price to suffer the worst one-day performance in 21 years. This is this boy right here. Uh, the cloud provider announced a team up with Microsoft to co-locate a portion of its infrastructure in the uh, Azure cloud. And then again, this is really what's so crazy for Microsoft, right? So you have a bunch of small little companies that use um, Azure because again, it's cheaper. You don't need to buy this in management. You don't need to hire like an IT guy really. Um, but when you start getting massive companies like Oracle shifting over infrastructure, this is when it becomes a snowballing effect for Microsoft, right? To where they become the end solution uh, for infrastructure. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, welcome back, everyone. Yeah, just to wrap this up, Again, for people who aren't here, Oracle's moving uh, their database infrastructure to Microsoft Azure. On the long term, this is going to cut costs for Oracle, uh, at least in that realm. So they'll either have more cash or you know more cash to dispose to other places to grow. And obviously, that is pretty solid for Microsoft in general. We're talking about uh, fish in the Grateful Dead in the den. 
And why that is interesting is because, well, there's two things. First, let's talk of this. Um, where the heck is it? Yeah, of course. I need to be better at uh, <laughs> kind of categorizing um, these tabs. Essentially, there's conversation that, uh, here we go. To begin, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty brutal on the pot stocks, but, you know, whatever. Anyways, this is really good for them. A report released Wednesday by the Congressional Research Services state that it's likely the DEA will reschedule marijuana to uh, Schedule 3, which will have broad implications for federal policy. You know, the fact that Schedule 1 is insane, up with, like, heroin and stuff like that, but I, you know, that's they did that time before I was alive, so I'm not really sure. Uh, recently, the Department of Health sent a letter to the Drug Enforcement Agency officially requesting marijuana to be reclassified as a Schedule 3 drug under the Controlled Substances Act, which would effectively legalize it for prescription use. The letter came in response to a request by President Biden last year um, for the government to research and consider rescheduling marijuana. So, you know, if this is done, what, what really happens with a lot of these, uh, you know, one, pot farmers, okay, what happens with the pot farmers, one, I think this is awesome uh, for them because I think it's so much money and it's good to get some money back into uh, cash croppers' pockets, especially when it's not tobacco or anything like that. Um, so what occurs is they can't really put their money in any kind of, like, bank, right? I'm sure now there are some workarounds to it, but when it was starting out, I mean, you had a lot of these dispensaries and farmers just sticking their cash in warehouses and having, uh, you know, private arms groups kind of protect it, right? Uh, very, very old school <laughs> in some sort of way. Uh, but this would be pretty good. Um, the pot stocks might seem a bump up. I still think there are some major problems uh, regarding the financials behind a lot of these companies, and it stands to see what will happen. I, I think also, you know, when you go to states where this is legal, especially for recreational use, I mean, this stuff's so expensive and it's taxed so wildly uh, that they end up losing revenue, um, and then obviously your street dealers kind of get back into the game. But this would, this would change a lot of things. So then we might see some serious looks at maybe larger companies adding pot stocks into their portfolio or greater investments into it. Uh, further along the jam band line is uh, psilocybin treatment. And I've seen a few companies now. Psilocybin is, I believe, Schedule 1. Um, this is a little bit different in Oregon. Uh, obviously, the states haven't been incurred on against the, the Fed hasn't kind of made incursions on the state for doing this, especially with pot. Um, psilocybin is being used as like treatments, um, and I think it's uh, recreational in Oregon. What's interesting in Florida is I've seen a few of these companies pop up now. They can't sell psilocybin. Uh, you know, this is that's the active compound turns into psilocin, and that's what gives the effects of these mushrooms, and that is uh, illegal. Now, there is another mushroom that exists up in, you know, like North uh, Europe, uh, the native Samis in Finland take it and, you know, whatever. I, mean, I won't go into the history of that, but it's called Amanita muscaria. And Amanita muscaria's active compound is muscanol, and this is not scheduled by the DEA. And so I've seen uh, in Tampa and in St. Pete, there's one popping up now, uh, that there are these mushroom houses and they're selling all these different products. And so you might see this get added in um, to some kind of portfolios as well. There's, a, there's already a lot of uh, therapeutic companies that are using um, psilocybin for treatment and uh, you know they suffer from the same thing as like the pot stocks you know they go through these kind of like hype cycles and then they sell off because there's nothing super tangible there yet um, but I think it's interesting to talk about um, and we're definitely seeing a laxing um, not only of you know compounds like this but also in medical treatment fields as well right I mean they're using MDMA as well to uh, help in therapy as opposed to some of these other pharmaceuticals. So I think that's interesting if you want to look a little bit more uh, into that. Uranium is going big today. It's hitting 12-year highs as the government warms to nuclear power, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, right? Uh, so uranium prices have surged to their highest level in 12 years, underlining a global renaissance in nuclear power as utilities race to lock in fuel supplies. Prices is, uh, excuse me, prices for the commodity, it's Friday morning, guys, sorry. Pr prices for the commodity dubbed yellow cake, as yellow cake uranium, uh, have jumped about 12% to 65.50 per pound over the past month, 
breaching last year's peak to reach heights not seen since 2011, according to data from UXC, which is a pricing data provider. Uranium demand has been lifted by governments from Washington to Seoul to Paris, seeking energy independence by extending the lifetime of the existing fleet of nuclear reactors as they contemplate building new plants after gas prices skyrocketed due to Russia's full-scale invasion of the Ukraine, but also because of Saudi Arabia. And, you know, all these prices are so interconnected and the world so interconnected. And the, the point is, is we don't live, you know, in the eschaton and history moves forward. So highly integrated markets, um, you know, when other countries tend to have other plans that are separate from the general hegemon, uh, you know, you get price disruption. So I think this is what we're seeing um, a shift away from. And uh, I've always been pretty big on nuclear, at least, not just uranium, but there's a lot of other uh, compounds as well, uh, such as thorium. Uh, the milestone for uranium prices marks a big step towards nuclear power's reemergence as a critical carbon-free source of baseload power in global efforts to tackle climate change. <coughs> Excuse me. A role that had been undermined by Japan's Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011. Yeah, well, that was built on a fault line as well, and that's something that needs to, uh, everyone needs to remember. Uh, you have focus on energy security colliding with focus on clean energy, said Grant Isaac, chief financial officer of Cameco, the world's second largest uranium producer. Uh, the days of buying $40 uranium ore are over, and probably also for $50 or $60. We're going to need uh, new supplies. So that's really cool. I think Basil was talking about uranium as well. Is this the uranium stock? Yeah, UUU. Only up modestly, 1.36% per, uh, right now for uh, quad U's. But I think that's cool. There's uh, Michigan as well is... Um, trying to re-invest uh, in there. Let me try to find this. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Give me one second, guys, sorry. Yeah, here we are. Uh, they're, they're reinvesting in this nuclear plant, and they're trying to reopen it. I think this is so cool because you can have localized energy production, right, and it is quote unquote clean. Of course, you need to figure out how to store the waste, but digging a big hole in the desert, I think is a lot better than letting it seep into the uh, water table. Um, Holtec International, subsidiary of Palisades Energy LLC, signed the deal this week with Wolverine Power Cooperative, not-for-profit energy provider, serving rural communities across Michigan. So we might be in a new atomic era, which I think, you know, just for the lore is pretty cool. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. 
A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, everyone. Um, Mark from Down East said in the den, and this is why I'm telling you to get in here, guys. Um, one of our posters, Z, great, I mean, super, super informative, right? Keeps you posted on everything. He was talking yesterday that gold might be uh, moving up. He said that yesterday, and gold is, we're at 1948 right now. Z is also always posting great information in the den, keeping us all updated get in there. If you're interested in gold too, I got to recommend trying out, again, 30-day money-back guarantee. If for whatever reason you don't like it, you send me an email, unsubscribe you, we get you refunded. This is the Gold Report newsletter by Tom O'Brien. You also get access to all of his subscriber webinars, and he just did one recently on what moves the gold market. That was August 30th. Still super fresh. Get in there, check it out. 119 a month, great deal. He releases this weekly. It's a very comprehensive newsletter. So I recommend checking that out. You can just go to tfnn.com. You get to the home. You navigate to newsletters. And you wait for it to load. And then you get to the gold report. And you go right there. And while you're there, again, hop over to services, $1 a year, the trading room. So you don't miss uh, some of this information that's going on all day long. Our friends over at Direction are rolling out NVIDIA-focused ETFs for bulls and bears. I love these. I was not used to them before uh, coming on board here at TFNN, these leveraged uh, ETFs, but uh, I've, I've come to really like them. Makes you feel like a cowboy a little bit, right? Uh, the Direction is rolling out two new exchange-traded ETFs, excuse me, exchange-traded funds, ETFs, tied to the price movement and shares NVIDIA. The financial products provider said on Wednesday, seeking to capitalize on the excitement over developments in artificial intelligence that helped boost stocks this year. And it gets you a better exposure to both the upside and the downside, um, which can benefit you. And uh, yeah, I love these. I love these leverage funds. It's 1.5 times return. Um, and they are just uh, fun to play around. You got to be you got to be smart about it. Right. I mean, there's a lot of different things that kind of can go wrong. But if you know what you're doing and you're intentional and you have a game plan, Check these guys out. Direction has a bunch of different leveraged ETFs, uh, especially, gosh, you know what? Let's take a look. Now, this is a leveraged oil. This is bullish right now. So trust funds, S&P oil and gas. This is the bull two times. Right now at 41.23, down 150. And then they have drip as well. And I play around with these sometimes. Obviously, they are inverse. Um, but yeah, take a look at those. I think that's neat. There's also some other things going on. We have QQQ zero days to expirations being released. That's not through direction, um, but these zero DTEs are wild. Uh, the QQQY, and again, that's zero DTE for the Qs <laughs> that's being released. Um, and I think that'll be really fun. These zero DTEs uh, are super interesting and uh, very good to 
kind of add into your trading arsenal. I really recommend learning how those work. Uh, we're going to try to do something a little bit like that uh, with TFNN, hopefully. Talking about how Caesars and MGM got hacked pretty badly um, by a Western hacking group, um, but overall, casinos have done pretty well. They had their best July ever, winning nearly $5.4 billion from gamblers. <laughs> That's like kind of an insightful title, right? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, commercial casinos in the U.S. had their best July ever this year, winning nearly $5.4 billion from gamblers, according to the figures released Thursday by National Gambling Industry Group. If you, any, have you ever had a reason to kind of convince yourself not to gamble, that might be it right there. Um, the American Gaming Association said that casinos' winnings were up nearly 6% from July 2022, uh, the association also said the casinos remain on pace to have their best year ever in 2023, with winnings from in-person casino games, sports betting, and internet gambling at nearly $38 billion. And that's so real. I, there has been really like a big cultural shift. Like a lot of guys my age, especially starting like in college, um, they, they loved sports betting. I don't know what it was, uh, but it just became almost like part of the culture. And I'm sure that maybe was the case everywhere, and now everyone can just do it online. So there's more access to it. But, you know, with companies like Barstool being so uh, influential, culturally speaking, uh, you know, we've seen just an uptick in uh, gambling. There's also, like, gambling YouTubers um, who just go and gamble and see what they win. And, uh, hey, you know, if that's your kind of thing, they have it. Uh, the association, the National Trade Group for Gambling Industry, also revealed that revenue from traditional in-person casino games in July was $4.4 billion, which is a new monthly record. It said those figures were aided by seasonal travel trends and the addition of several new physical casino properties around the country, including Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Sports betting generated nearly $498 million in revenue in July, uh, up over 28% from a year ago. Internet gambling in Connecticut, Delaware, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, it generated another $481 million, up nearly 23% from a year ago. So there you go. That is, uh, that's pretty impressive. And if you want to get some exposure, we got stocks for that. So we were talking about Chrysler a little bit earlier. This is owned by Stellantis. Uh, Chrysler calls over 4,000 plug-in hybrid vehicles, citing risks of fire. It, okay. You give them a little bit of a break, right? This is like newer tech, and maybe they're trying to figure out some things uh, for themselves. But I'm also starting to have like thinner kind of patience for automobile companies. And one thing I'll bring up is like Jeep. I was helping someone. Uh, they got sadly they got into a car accident uh, with the car that they were so it was essentially paid off, or at least they just didn't own any you know debt to a company for it. They got into a car accident. They wanted to get a new car, so I was helping them kind of navigate that and figure out what to pick out. And they really wanted a Jeep. And I don't blame them, right? Jeeps are beautiful cars. Uh, they look good. Uh, but they were looking in the market for like a 2016 and uh, 2017 Jeep. Um, and I was like, don't buy these cars, right? I, one of my family members had a uh, Jeep Commander and spent a lot of money for it. And two years into the thing, uh, it just started breaking. I mean, everything started breaking on it. I don't understand. you know. And then now, coming out from the 2015, 2016 models of, of Jeeps, uh, you know, like the crossovers and stuff like that. Uh, they, after 110,000 miles, they catch on fire. And it's like, you know, vehicles aren't new. Uh, this technology is there. And of course, you're adding and developing. I'm not trying to sound ignorant on this, but um, it just seems like this happens so often. And it's not, you know, minor things like, okay, the airbag, you know, didn't work with some new tech. I mean, it's just like simple, again, like the engine catching on fire or something like that. Well, for Chrysler, at least, as they're calling over 4,000 plug in hybrid vehicles, citing fire risks. Um, and uh, the company has issued a recall for 4,129 model year 2023-24 Alfa Romeo Tonales and Dodge Hornet plug-in hybrid vehicles. Uh, owing to certain cables not being tightened properly, uh, the electrical connections may overheat and cause a fire even when the vehicle is parked. Um, the company said in the filing with National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. So keep that in mind if you're in the market you know, for an Alfa Romeo or anything um, coming out of Chrysler for that. Speaking on some stuff uh, regarding EVs, this is uh, not necessarily American news, but it's interesting uh, since it is, it does have to do uh, with the global economy. 
Um, the Chinese are flooding electrical vehicles uh, into EU. When I was out in the Balkans, this was a massive thing they were doing, and they weren't expensive either, which kind of raises some eyes. If Chrysler's are catching on fire, uh, can cheap Chinese electric cars that are being produced to flood markets catch on fire as well? Um, and that's just something to consider. I don't know if we'll see any here in China, uh, from China soon, but it's interesting. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're at 9.54 right now, about 25 minutes after open. We are down to sideways, ES down 0.55%, Russell down 0.63%, and Q down 0.93%. The YM sideways almost, 0.3%, gold at 1945. Disney at 85.92. What are we doing here at Disney? Ooh. Uh, I like the one month, but uh, that's not so bad. Not intense volume, but not, you know, negligible volume either. We'll see what happens. All right. We only have a short, oh yeah, we have a short segment. Ah. All right, well, here, we'll talk about this very quickly. Uh, generative AI, I love to talk about the cybersecurity. I'm gonna keep you guys posted on this, don't you worry. Generative AI has led to exploding cybersecurity risks for facing, uh, excuse me, risks facing everyday people, McAfee CEO warns. We don't even have to go through this. This is pretty wild. I, okay, when you're, you know, trying to hack someone, right, one of the traditional ways to do it is, you know, you scan the network, you scan, you find computers on the network, it's called enumeration. Um, 
you run a port scan on a specific IP address that's connected to a machine within the network, a computer in the network. Your computer communicates uh, with other computers or programs uh, through ports, right? There's different protocols on these ports, and some of them are uh, less secure than others. Uh, you find out what that is, you run an exploit on the port if they have a weak one open, and then uh, depending on um, what port you use, you can do a bunch of different things within the computer. Uh, this is a very multi-step process. It can be pretty time consuming. Um, I know it made it sound simple, um, and it is straightforward, but there's a lot that goes into it. I saw a guy use ChatGPT to write a script that automates a network enumeration, port scanning, and then finding the most insecure port um, for what he wanted, which was something called remote um, access, right? So there's a lot of like RDP ports and everything like that. Uh, pretty insane. Furthermore, Samsung uh, coders were using generative AI uh, to write some of the code. That goes to the cloud. Hackers were somehow able to access that and um, were able to compromise some Samsung devices. Anyways, I'll link this in the den. Folks, thank you so much. Tommy will be back Monday. We have Basil up next, and Larry will be here for the 1 p.m. Stay tuned for that.